All right, welcome you all uh, for coming to this webinar. Uh, it's actually the first of its kind in our community network. And we hope you'll enjoy your stay. Welcome to you. Um, right now we are uh, Samuel and Mr. Jason Shadow. Thank you for coming. All right, let me just give a rundown of the program of the webinar today. It's going to be a very brief one, and it's going to be worthwhile. Trust me. We have a lot in store for you today. All right, right about now, uh, we'll, I'll begin with the presentation of the agenda. From there, we'll have a brief summary about NEFTEC and her activities by the founder of NEFTEC, uh, Mr. Nevis. Straight after that, we'll move to the presentation segment. We'll have, we'll have um, four presentations today. As of now, we have four presentations. Boris is not yet here. So the first presentation will be why hardware development needs to be promoted. Why hardware development needs to be promoted. Remember this? Uh, webinar is all about hardware development to um, uh, uh, to improve um, in our community. So it's in, perfectly in line with that. Second presentation will be done by Chungs, and the topic is going to be hardware as a developing tool in, in Africa. Next, the third presentation will have it done by Mr. John. And he's going to be talking to us about identifying community problems and developing suitable hardware solutions for them. All right, right about there, we'll move to the fourth presentation being done by um, Mr. Boris. Uh, he's going to be talking to us about commercializing uh, hardware skills. And then we'll have a final presentation by the CEO of NEFTEC. And he's going to be talking to us about uh, hardware, the future of technology development. And from there, we'll have a closing remark and the webinar will be done. All right, once again, you're all welcome. And right about now, we'll call on um, the founder of NEFTEC to tell us briefly from three minutes about NEFTEC and her activities. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Brandon, for giving me the floor to talk about NEFTEC. I want to appreciate and welcome each and everyone who is present right now uh, on this live webinar. Uh, I'm, so, I'm so happy that you guys showed up. And it shows that we, we, we really know why, why we are attending the, the webinar. Yeah. So I'm going to give a brief rundown about NEFTEC. So um, some years back, I... I found NFTEC just because of my my work. So uh, at first I used to just make things, uh, hardware pro projects, but I wanted to create a platform where I can inspire others or to teach other these skills. Because hardware is, is something that is helping technology to grow very fast. So I decided to create NFTEC. And I started by creating a, a, a Facebook page where I was sharing the various projects and activities that I was doing. And that's that just how it, it went on. And, and then this year, I decided to, to form a team that we can work together. And we have been working on, we have worked on some projects and we are still working on some. Presently, we are, we are developing some. Uh, during the coronavirus uh, period, like now, we, we developed a, a, about three solutions to help solve the spread of coronavirus. And that's, just some of the things which are helping us or that are, yeah, so that's what really inspired me to create NFTEC. And apart from that, we are also here to promote entrepreneurship because if we keep on doing projects like maybe we develop a, a machine to maybe grind, to, to grind cassava for you. And if you, if you cannot market it, that's entrepreneurship. So we are also, focus, we are also focusing on entrepreneurship to, um, to help you, anyone who is interested or anyone doing that, how you can be able to market that machine or that product. And then we also focus on leadership. 
I focus on team building, communication, communication. So we are really uh, promoting those those fields at NEFTEC. So that's just a brief uh, presentation I have. As we go along in the meeting, as uh, as you get to know us more, you're going to talk more about our activities and other things we do. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much. Uh... Nevi is the founder of Nestec. It's, it's, it's been a journey and it's been an amazing one. And we've got to um, be part working with you. It's really uh, uh, um, been a pivot because we've got to learn a lot of things. And we've also got exposure, especially uh, to hardware related stuff and having hands on building a lot of things. And, and networking too is really been awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much for that initially. And it is unique. It is one of its kind, especially where I am and in the Silicon Mountain, because we I call the Silicon Mountain. We have a lot of software uh, communities around, uh, but we don't really have a hardware community. So there was a big need for for a platform such as Neftech. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Right about now, um, we will be going straight into the presentation um, parts and we'll be having some hardware development talks. Um, we're to start off with um, um, the first presenter, Golda, but uh, it's like she has some network challenges. So we will, um, we will just go on um, with Chung. Chung will be presenting to us um, hardware. <laughs> as a developing tool in Africa. So that's the topic he's going to be presenting about. So Chung, um, you have, you can take uh, the floor. Thank you. I was speaking about hardware as a developing tool in Africa, as I said earlier. So, um, there are many problems in Africa, or the main, the most countries in Africa are, and are underdeveloped. And we can use hardware to develop these countries. There are many countries in Africa are underdeveloped. So, hardware is really the, the main solution to this underdevelopment. So, this, I'm, going to, I'm going to introduce major problems in Africa. I'll also talk about the solutions to these problems. Okay, first of all, as a topic, as a topic, as as a topic that I'm speaking on goes hardware as a developing tool in Africa. First of all, what's, what's hardware? If you ask, hardware is just these are physical components that make up an electrical system. There are tangible elements as you can see and touch. Also, these problems I'm going to speak about, these are, these are problems that us African can, that we can solve the, the problems. They're not above us. It's just for us to take the bold step to, to solve them. So also, I'm going to speak on the first problem of this, the energy problem, that's electricity. So this, this energy, this even the that this is a backbone to industrialization in most countries in Africa, especially in a country like Cameroon, for example. The main reason why um, Cameroon has not industrialized very well is because of the energy problem that we're having. So if we can really maximize the use of this energy uh, and, and resources that we have, we will come in place like the use of renewable energy hardware systems, like solar power systems. This solar power system, like in a solar power system, the inverters, solar panels, these are all hardware systems. And these systems, these hardware systems, they, they are, um, these, are, these, um, these are solutions to the power problem. We can also use, you can also use wind turbines to, to generate, uh, from the wind to generate um, electricity. Wind turbine, this, 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 this is also a hardware system. So we can really use hardware to combat the, the problem of um, um, the problem of energy. As I said earlier, energy is a backbone to industrialization in Africa. Without energy, we can we cannot we cannot develop. Yes, I'll go to I'll speak on the next problem: drought and famine. Yes, this drought and famine. This is a very big 
problem in most African countries, especially like Somalia, Ethiopia. People go, people go for days without drinking water. Animals that, as you see, people starve. First of all, what's farming? Farming is this a um, farming um, is a extreme scarcity of food, and then drought. Drought, this this um, drought is a long period period of the absence of rainfall. So with all these people will die. So hardware technology can also solve this problem, as I'm saying. So like, um, first of all, I want to make I want to make something clear. You see, seventy percent of the earth is made up of water, but only zero point zero zero three percent of that water is fresh. So we can also desaline, desalinate water, that's remove salt from water. There are hardware systems that can help to this transform sea water or water that contains salt to fresh water that people can drink. There are also hardware systems that 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 we can build or, or that are already in even in place that condense gas to water so that people can drink. That's condensed air so that people can drink. So all this with this hardware technology can help reduce um reduce this drought and farming. Even there are also automatic um, irrigation systems that are in place to help grow uh, um, food fast for people to eat. So I'll, I'll go to the next one. Insecurity. You all know we have heard about the famous Boko Haram in the north of Cameroon and also mainly in Nigeria. It's not, also, it's, it's not only Boko Haram that is a, that, um, that, um, it's not only Boko Haram that is a terrorist group in Africa. There are other terrorist groups in Africa, like the Asha, but there are, also, there, there are many others. So with this, um, with insecurity, with a lot of insecurity in the country, it hinders, it hinders development of that country. And many African countries are facing these uh, insecurities, even internal crimes. So the use of hardware uh, um, cameras, CCTV cameras, can help um, monitor, monitor a, a, a terrorist group or even a, a monitor civilians to, 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 to catch criminals and also reduce crimes. If CCTV drones have solved many um, crime um, 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 crime investigations in America, also other countries abroad, even surveillance drones, you can survey an area to discover the military can use um, drones to survey an area, uh, area to 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 um, to discover the hideout of um, the enemy. So you can take you can you can attack the enemy by the, by the element of surprise. Okay, I'll go to the next problem: the poor healthcare. We all know, especially in rural areas, villages, there's, uh, we don't have like really good healthcare conditions. People have died not because uh, people have died because of diseases. That if if they had proper health uh, 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 um, um, healthcare at their disposal, they, they could have survived. So mainly, majority of drugs that we even consume in Africa are produced abroad. These drugs we can also produce them. They are no more than us. So we can, we can use hardware, we can, we can also be an industry to produce our own drugs using hardware systems. All these robotic arms in the industry to facilitate the production of drugs, all these uh, 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 machines that help that helps in the production of these drugs. So production of these drugs now will reduce, that's reduce the cost of drugs. People can easily buy drugs and take care of themselves. Um, uh, um, themselves. And also during um, also during surgery, many people have died um, in surgery because of the carelessness of the doctor or some other reason. So that that they um, um, they have invented that they have invented um, robotic um, hardware systems that can help in surgery, robotic surgery um, equipment. Also, there are also smart inhalers, especially for people that have asthma. Hardware, the small hardware um, um, smart inhalers that can help help um, um, asthma patients. There are also artificial organs, especially artificial heart, artificial lungs. There are, there are people that there, there, there are people on earth that their heart cannot support that cannot pump enough blood around the body. So they create small hardware systems that are attached to the body that helps in the pumping of blood around. So all this, the poor healthcare, the hardware can really contribute to the saving of many lives in Africa. So thank you. I'm going to review the problems again. I'll start. We have the energy problem in Africa. We have drought and famine. We have the insecurity. We have poor health care. There are many other problems that we have in Africa. Not only these problems I'm speaking about. There are many other problems. Not only these problems. So 
we can all see that we can use hardware technology to to solve the problem. That's that that that's a, that's even the main reason of that's that's even the main reason behind technology to solve come that's to solve the problems around the community. So we can use all these hardware um, hardware systems that we have at our disposal to um, um, to solve the problems in Africa and develop Africa. Because Africa, when they talk about Africa, people just imagine um, underdeveloped countries, poor, poor people, all the stuff. But we are in the capacity to solve all these problems and develop. The whites are no magician, all gods. That we can, we can also do all the, all the stuff that they do, only with the hardware technology we have at our disposal. So thank you once more. I'm called Chung Dangsak, member of the Neftek, Neftek team. So thank you. Wow, well, thank you, thank you so much, uh, John. Uh, the presentation has been uh, has been wonderful. Uh, there's a lot of points, key points being uh, picked there. I picked a lot, and this just the importance of hardware development just can't be overemphasized. You mentioned the, the area of energy, and energy being the backbone of most industrialized industrialized countries. Yes, yes. And insecurity, you know, um, that smart systems could be built to tackle and uh, tackle down the insecurity faced by Africa because insecurity hinders a um, lot and, and the development. Also, you mentioned healthcare, very powerful and strong points. Well, from this webinar, you could sit back, do more research on the different technologies being used in those different. Uh, fields you mentioned already, you'll be amazed and how much work still needs to be done. Thank you so very much, uh, Jim. It's been wonderful. All right, right it's about now, <laughs> right about now, we'll be going, uh, we'll be taking our next presentation, and, um, and this will be done to us by Acha Golda. She is going to be talking to us about. Uh, uh, She'll be talking to us about uh, why hardware development needs to be planted. You see, um, John just made mention about hardware as a developing uh, tool in Africa. He made mention of how hardware could be used to take Africa to the next level. And Goda is just coming to act in that light, the real necessity why um, hardware needs to be developed. So, Goda, uh, if you're getting me, um, it's uh, I'm gone, but thank you. Okay. Um. So, 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 um, uh, uh, if 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 you are good, I think uh you, you, you should be. You 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 just do your presentation right now. Then uh, Golda will come up uh, while uh, she's getting her network stabilized and. So John is going to be talking about about uh, uh, he's going to, to be talking to us about identifying community problems and developing suitable hardware solutions to them. So uh, just sit back and relax. It's, it's gonna it's, it's gonna be awesome. Thank you, Sir John. Over to you. Um, John, I'm sure. I'll be talking on locating community problems and providing suitable hardware solutions for them. We all, we as we are in Africa, we are known worldwide for our many problems. We have a lot of problems in Africa. And why we're talking about hardware solutions is because our youth are very much versed with software solutions and software solutions, software cuts across geographical boundaries. That's why we have minimal software problems. But looking at the hardware, com the hardware problems, we have a lot of hardware problems. Problems we face in Africa. We have a lot of problems in Africa. In Africa, we face a lot of problems, a lot of technical problems. These problems arise due to lack of technical know-how and economic impediments. Yeah, lack of technical know-how because in our educational system, we lack the instruments in our various laboratory, if at all we have them in our schools. We, have, we lack the 
free access to the lab and all those things especially those in the rural areas they don't have the they don't have access to this so some economic impediments are lack of funding poor root networks technical hardware equipment Putting aside the problems of lack of no technical know and all the others, we also have juvenile delinquency and many more. Juvenile delinquency, our youths nowadays are our youths nowadays are so fascinated about the improvement in technology and use it in a careless way and they misuse their time and opportunities as young people. Our youths lack the self-consciousness and the economic consciousness, which gives birth to an anti-entrepreneurial mindset. Self-consciousness, that's, you don't pay keen attention to the problems you face, attention to your economy. You don't try to foresee the future. What's Cameroon going to be like in the nearest future? What's Africa going to be like in the nearest future, how how is my finances and all the rest? How how how? So all the this question, how and how and how? How do we locate problems and how do we provide suitable solutions? We need an entrepreneurial mindset to solve solutions, to identify problems, and the only way we can do that is to be conscious to our economy. Suitable hardware solutions. We have solutions such as we have a robotic arm flame monitor, automatic water dispensers. Robotic arms help in, in the community in many ways. They help in heavy lifting and all the others. They help in accessing areas where they may be radioactive or many other things. Flame monitors. Here in Africa, especially in our first Duala, we, we hear a lot of burn downs and all the others. If we have things like flame monitors, they're far more easier. Just imagine, just as the sense of, just as the surface of any smoke, the security personnel are being alert because we all know there's no smoke without fire. So just the sense of smoke, just as smoke surfaces, sorry, all the medical, all the security personnel have been, have been, alert, have been alerted. So we have the, yeah, we can see the automatic water dispensers. So locating community problems. We can locate a problem by listening to ourselves, like I said, self-consciousness. What are the problems we face in our daily lives? We can locate problems by listening to others and observing our economy. What are the problems our economy is facing? Our economy is facing a lot of hardware problems. I did my research based on Cameroon, my immediate problems. What are we importing that we can manufacture? Here in Africa, we we import more than we export. And when that happens, we become over dependent on the whites and other continents, which is bad for us. So in our local community, if we can join hands and educate the youth in the rural areas, they will come up with a technopreneurial mindset, start creating the things that we are importing, if we are importing toothpicks and others. Automatic water dispensers to stop COVID-19. This is a hardware solution because in when you go to public places, you want to wash your hands, you tend to touch the tap and all the others. So this automatic water dispenser that it prohibits you from touching any surface of it, 
of this machine such that if any other person came in contact with it and stubbornly touched it, you won't be infected because you did not touch it at all. So this is an automated um, system. Applying this in our system, in our economy is going to help, that is going to come a long way in stopping this. Our so problems we face in Africa and their possible areas like the hands-on practical skills and hardware in skills in hardware development. The solutions we can have, the solutions we can provide here is reach out to the public and educate the needy. The needy are those people found in the rural areas who lack the finances to, if not finances, they lack the idea, they are ignorant of the of how much hardware can impact our community. What we are importing a lot of products and we produce less. Improve on our hardware skills and become better entrepreneurs because when we have skills, that is the only way we can make money. That's make be sure of financial freedom. Why? Because if we turn up to open a store today, we have a lot to manage. You have to manage, you sell many other things. You you have a lot to manage, but provided you have a skill, a skill is something that is that is it is embedded in you. You need no over you need no high knowledge in economy and all that to manage the skills within you. The skills are within you. It flows like a river. So, improving on our skill makes or makes us better entrepreneur. We produce a lot out of nothing. Lack of hardware communities. Create hardware communities because when we great things are inevitable, everything, everything great must happen. That's great things are bound to happen. Our youth together and download in them, install in them these skills, and they will become. Data entrepreneurs. Hardware communities will strengthen our youth. So let us produce hardware communities where we reach out to people and of hardware. A hardware community as NEFTEC is what we need in this our present era. Let us improve. Thank you. I'm doing a chore. Wow, wow. <laughs> Thank you, Sir John. <laughs> I was thrilled by that. In fact, uh, while you're going, um, while you're doing the um, presentation, um, I had some moments of uh, uh, thinking, just random thoughts um, about all these, um, a couple of challenges uh, Africa is facing. And uh, realizing the potential we have, realizing the potential we have, I think we can do a lot. We can do a lot. And I think more will be done. That's why platforms such as this uh, in the community is actually here. And through this platform, we get exposure um, and hands on on hardware equipment to work with and i think a lot can be done and it's already been done we will not say africa is zero no we won't say that because africa is not zero at all there are a lot of great minds out there that are doing their own part so which is wonderful and we just need to join the show and much more can be accomplished Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. John. That was awesome. It was really uh, mind blowing. All right, uh, right about now, we will um, be going straight away to our next presentation. I think uh, Acha Golda, she's going to be, uh, she's going to be talking to us. And um, she'll be talking about um, the need for hardware development to be promoted in our community. Okay, Gola, you is gone. Thank you, Gola. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Apos. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm very happy that we are doing this meeting today. I'll be talking on why hardware development should be encouraged. Because I have five, four points that I think is there are the reasons why hardware development should be encouraged. We have increased demand for hardware products. We have global advancement in technology, opportunity for individuals to develop their skills on hardware, and to encourage entrepreneurship. Yeah. So a high demand for hardware products. When I talk of a high demand for hardware products, uh, if you look around us today, you see that almost everybody wants to own a cell phone, yes, no matter the age, you have kids from 12 years and above who wants to own a cell phone. So you see that there's a high demand for some hardware products. Computers, we also have uh, laptops that are being produced out there, and many Cameroonians want to own it. Basically, everybody uh, wants to own at least a laptop. We also have uh, fans in, to at least solve the climatic problems in our homes. So there is that um, desire for hardware products in in our homes. Every individual in the world today, at least they own one hardware product. We have global advancement in technology. A greater change in the world technology. Machines are replacing human labor, artificial intelligence, robotics, gradually advancing. You, you see that uh, nowadays, like if you take, for example, those living in the United States, China, um, they, they no longer use their hands to wash clothes. They use hand um, washing machines to wash their clothes. So those are some of the advancement in technology that we as Africans really love it uh, if those technologies are brought in our country. And many people, many people are really, they really want that. So since we have the ideas, because I know it, and many, there are many youth out there who have those ideas but don't have people who can encourage them or even sponsor them to do things. So since we have those ideas, I think it's necessary for us to encourage our development. Yes, by doing that, we we help solve some small community problems. Even by producing small uh, hardware devices, like you have uh, automatic water dispenser that was produced by the left teams, at least that solved the community problems. We have opportunities for individuals to develop their skills in hardware. There are a lot of innovative ideas that is buried within every individual out there. We just need to develop it. There are some people out there that need us to encourage them that they can do it. And by encouraging them, if we can launch like small workshops. But I remember for once when I started, let blinking a light was something that uh, created a spark in me. At least by blinking a light, it showed me that I could actually create other things. Starting small, like I'm giving it the opportunity to create small projects. It might go into something big. So I have to encourage entrepreneurship, most importantly, once to produce our hardware project, we need to market it. And when you market it, you earn money. So let's say you, 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 you start from small, like you start from producing, let me say toothpicks, something like that. You use, not toothpicks, sorry, um, let me say small, like the water that I was producing by the in, if you produce those small hardware products and they are being the market, you see that you have created your, uh, you have earned some money from it and some small business or startups, which in the nearest future, you can employ people to work there. It's, it's, it's also creating employment to every individual out there. Not only the government employing us, but with our skills, we can make money and employ ourselves and our peers out there. Thank you very much. Um, I am Acha Buda. Thank you. Wow. 
thank you, uh, Gula. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Despite uh, the network challenges, you still uh, tried to, and the presentation was awesome. And right about now, we will uh, be moving to our next presentation uh, with uh, Boris. So Boris, he's going to be talking to us about how to commercialize our, our hardware skills. And um, Boris, if you can hear me, please, um, you, you, you can proceed, please. Please, can everyone hear me? Please, can we unmute our mic and say hi? Because, yes. Um, yes, I can hear you, I can. Yes, we can hear you. Eh? We can hear you. All right. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. I think we'll be going to our final presentation for the day. We will. Uh. We will right about now. Uh. Invite. Uh, the founder and the CEO of NetTech, uh, he's going to be chilling us and, 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 and he has a wonderful presentation to <laughs> prepare for, for, for us. He's, he's a mentor, he's, 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 in fact, he's just so fun to be with and you get to learn a lot, you get to learn a lot. And uh, so please, we will be, uh, let's make welcome uh, uh, the CEO and founder of NetTech, um, Maybe yeah, he's going to be speaking to us about the future of hardware, uh, uh, of hard hardware development in Africa. Thank you, Nevi. Momio, documentation of fine business. The next one, It's it's better. We can get you now. Okay, so, so um, um, thank you very much for giving me the floor, uh, Franz Brandon. Um, I want to thank each and everyone who showed up and, and who is present here with us. This live webinar on hardware development talk about why we are here and and why the need of uh, we have seen that a lot of hardware a lot of software communities exist and and hardware communities are lagging so we are really pushing her to see that hardware hardware communities also grow up to the community yeah. So right about now, I'm just going to to share with you what, what I did for this webinar. Can you see it? So like, I'm, I'm presenting on hardware uh, as a future of the technological development. Uh, we have talked a, talk a lot about uh, hardware development. We have seen the need why we should promote hardware development. We have seen the need why we should do hardware devices. Um, so in this in this uh, presentation, I'm going to sh I'm going to be showing sharing sharing with you more or reasons more why. Hardware is going to be the future, and it's it's not really going to be the future. It's already happening right now. Um, so my so my name is Nervis Zometia, and I'm the founder of NetTech, like Brandon has already said. So I'm going to take you through a rundown: the future of technology in education, the future of technology in agriculture. The future of technology. So, hardware is really helping these sectors to to grow, to grow very fast. And in future, hardware is going to take over almost all activities in these sectors. So, um, the future of technology uh, 
it's virtually impossible to name an industry that has not been transformed by 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 this te by technology using hardware. Yes, so I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure anyone can tell me an industry that is not using hardware for technological advancement from agricultural sector, manufacturing industry, education, transport, and just you know a few dollar of them. So almost every industry, hardware development has taken over the transformation. Technology has transformed workflow and development in these sectors. So I'm talking technology because technology is what is helping us develop the hardware. Yes. Yeah. So hardware is, is, is what is helping, is helping creating the, the, the drive in these sectors. So technology is what is helping us develop the hardware. This transformation has been possible due to the implementation of hardware devices and equipment to facilitate the process. Okay, so now we'll go into the future of technology in education. We have, we have talking a lot about that, and you see that in education, we now use laptops to read our notes, to do so many things in, in school, and that's just how technology and hardware is helping this transformation. So if, like Chung said, he really gave a definition of hardware. Hardware is, the, they are the physical components or the materials that we see, and a laptop, an iPad, and hologram, holographic devices, those are all hardware devices. So on this picture, you can see that students are now using holographic uh, devices to be able to, to, to see the human body and even touch the, the different parts of the human body. So that's just how technology and hardware, hardware in general, like I said, technology is what is helping us to build the hardware devices. So hardware, you see how hardware is transforming the educational sector. It's going to transform it, and this is what will be happening in the future. And they will go into agriculture. The future of agriculture will use sophisticated materials such as robots, sensing technologies. When we talk about sensing technologies, we talk about we talk about sensors. Now we, we don't have to bother about checking on the temperature of our farms, checking on the moisture content, because we have sensors, we have sensing technologies that has been possible due to hardware development. We have been able to develop hardware sensors to be able to monitor the temperature of our crops, the soil moisture content, and to spray our farms using drones. You see, a drone is a hardware device. Yeah, so that's how hardware is, shape, is going to be shaping the future. We are using GB, GPS technology. We can, we can be able to survey an area, we can be able to survey an area using a drone and using, and, and with the help of what? We can use robots, we can use drones, like as you can see in the picture. And, these advancement devices will allow farms to be more profitable, safe, efficient, and environmental. This is going to, to make our farms to be more effective, efficient, safer, environmentally friendly. Yeah, so that's, those are some of the benefits that we're going to have using hardware in the future. And now we'll go into the field of, of, of delivery. I talk of delivery, I talk of, I talk of delivery, I don't mean the delivery in the hospital, I talk of basically just delivering stops. You can deliver a package to someone, you can deliver food stop, you can deliver medical equipment. So I'll go into a medical fee. You see that drones are helping us now to be able to deliver uh, blood banks, deliver uh, tablets, especially in remote areas. Let's say for example, and they're going to have in, for the food industry, food industry is, is, is really growing, growing very fast, especially in delivery like this, using drones. You see that they are using now drones. You have DHL, you have Amazon. They, they, they don't have to bother much about sending people or sending vehicles. They just have to send drones to remote areas. So now, for example, if, if I'm unable to, to send, to send a, a pastor in a remote area or in a village far away from, from the town where I live, I just have to use a drone to, to send... A, you just have to use a drone and then I see where I am. I control it to that remote area to deliver this part, this parcel or, or this package for me. And then for blood, for, 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 for the medical fee, it's an emergency condition. And I have to deliver a blood bank of maybe about 30. And if someone cannot work on foot or if, if a vehicle cannot reach a particular point, at a particular time of the night, you just have to use hardware devices like drones to deliver these things for us. So that's how the hardware 
uh, industry is, is transforming the, the, the various sectors, like the delivery industry, the agriculture, uh, the education, and now we move into manufacturing. You see that at first, we could see human beings standing where these robots are standing, doing all the work, everything. Even though the, the, even though the cars are the hardware uh, uh, things, but what are the things that are producing those cars? They are hardware uh, devices, they are hardware machines. So here we have robots, robots are transforming. Robots are transforming the manufacturing industry. They, nano, they have nanotechnology, you have cloud processes and helping manufacturers save costs and improve their products. So while hardware is, is, is replacing human beings, not, not actually completely, Placing human beings, but it's helping process uh, co uh, products to be to be fast. Uh, is helping the manufacturing process to be to be very fast. So um, so we so because we have seen a need of hardware at Neftec, we have decided to go because we have seen a need and have been able to develop an automatic water dispenser. I think uh, Navy has some network. I'm sure network. Yeah. But he's back on board. He's back. Navy space who cannot get you well. Okay, I'm back. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, it's better now. Okay. Yes, yeah, okay, it's okay. I'll see you, okay. Okay. So. So I was talking about the, the products which we have been able to develop at NFT because we have seen a need of hardware development and coronavirus uh, just gave us some ideas, gave us another idea to develop a, a touchless wash hand basin because the virus was spreading so fast that we, we wanted to do something automatic. So we decided to make this touchless wash hand basin that can help, that can be put in streets, in offices, in schools to reduce the spread of the virus. I also have a, a flame monitor where if we have fire hazards every time in areas like in Douala, you just have to, you can, people can buy these products and, and install them in their, in their schools, in their markets to help reduce that. So that every time they sense a fire or something, it just alarms or, or activates water to flow and stop the fire. And that's how we are, we are helping to be, be have solutions to, yeah. So, Thank you very much for listening for listening to this presentation. Um, as, as I finish the presentation, if you want to get anyone wants to get to us, uh, you can get to us through our social media platforms. Or I, I, I hope this presentation was was as uh, enlightening some of the things which we do not know or which we are still to learn about the future of technology uh, using hardware. Yeah, thank. you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sir Nevis. <laughs> it was thrilling. Thank you. Thank you so much. The slides were beautiful and the presentations were just uh, put straight, straightforward, very simple, gems and clear. Thank you so much. I got a lot to learn from. I got a lot to, to learn from. Okay, right about now we'll be uh, rounding up and our last segment for this webinar this program is um, a question and answer session 
uh, we've had different speakers already present. And right now we will be um, giving the opportunity to participants to maybe, uh, uh, maybe contribute to um, the ideas already um, maybe ask a question and right about now uh, we will be uh, uh, giving room for that so please uh, if uh, any of you want uh, to ask a question can you just unmute your mic uh, right now and say something i see um uh, sir, sir Rogic, it's like sir Rogic has has uh, a question and uh, sir, sir Rogic, the, the, the room is um you, you have the floor, thank you. All right, is, is any other person having a question to ask uh, while we're waiting on uh, um, Sir Roderick? Yeah, please, if you have a question, maybe uh, uh, you can just unmute your mic and say we are already on the concluding phase. This is the last phase of the webinar. Maybe a contribution. Okay. Um. Um. So, so, so OG just sent a question. Uh, he's having uh, challenges. So, uh, maybe um, talk. Maybe he's in noisy environment or something. But he just sent a question, and the question is um um as this. So he's saying, um, with all these advancements, what are we to do as locals to meet up with the hardware trend? So I take the question over again. With all these advancements, what are we to do as locals to meet up with the hardware trend? Uh, please, we will be inviting us as a Navy to take on this question. The question is, with all these advancements, what are we to do as locals to meet up with the hardware trend? A question for me? Yes, please. Okay, so like I've said, um, we have seen that um, in the future, we may not, like robots are already taking over most of the things that, that people do in industries. Now drones, are, at first you could see that you could use a video, but, now, but nowadays you use drones to take to for, for videos. So you see that, since, since these things are already taking over, we have to just engage in them, try to see how we can, we can also get into developing this, these tools. We have a lot of problems around. We, in, there, are, there, there are already problems that they are solving. So we can also look in our environments to see that if there's a problem, we can also try to develop hardware solutions. Like for example, the corona, we're able to develop a robot, we're able to develop a, an automatic water uh, dispenser. So that's just how we have to to, to, to to get into this since it's already something that is is, is, is ongoing. Okay, I have found. Please, can I also contribute? Avance. I get yes, to me. Yes, 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 strong, please. I uh, go on, please contribute to, to, to answering the question. Thank you. And please just repeat the question again, please. Okay. The question is I've even dropped in the chat room, but the, the, the question is uh, uh, with all these advancements, what are we to do as locals to meet up with the hardware trend? Okay. <laughs> From my own point of view, I suggest that, like, we all know that the technology abroad is advanced as compared to the technology in Africa. So, 
the, the, the best thing that we can do to meet up to the, the, the technology trend is just to educate other people and educate ourselves about that to gain skills in the hardware the hardware and domain as the next tech team is doing so that's the best way to really uh, uh, um, make many people in africa aware that hardware is a possible solution um, to solve problems in africa because if people don't know about any stuff concerning technology hardware they're not going to be that's motivated to learn things because many people are actually really into things they, they, they actually um, really like technology but there's no one that to even make them aware or tell them as let me just a main example was like my i'll take for example like myself was i remember the day that um saint Nevis came to our class and introduced the arduino to us so from that day that i knew about the hardware and all about arduino and other stores it, it like sparked something a fire in my brain to 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 it made me to know about changing technologies around and I, I was also motivated to learn all, um, all of that as we all know the the great america as we know with the, the the big technology that they have today they never they never started they, they never had all those technology in one in, in, in a day it took hundreds of years before they had the um, um they, they are where they are today with the the, the big technology that they have so for me, just educating the youth and other people about hardware technology and its advantages to solve problems in the community, that that is going to really make us to 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 to, to be in line with the hardware the hardware technology trend that is going around the world as we know today. So thank you again. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so okay, so, so so like I was saying um we like I said, since it's coming now, it's already ongoing. We have we have to get we have to engage ourselves in. We have to to be able to uh, locate problems around us, like June already said, and look for possible solution. But what if you don't have the skills uh, uh, in need? So now, what people who are already engaged in need have at how supposed to make create it. Like that, so that and to, to tell them the need and why we are doing it like what we are doing now. So that's just what I have to say. Okay, thank you, uh, Nevis and Charles, uh, for, for, for your con uh, contribution. Um, um, so the question asked by Sir Rogic, and thank you, sir, for your question. Um, I think and um, and um, Daniel, uh, I think he has a worry too. Uh, I think um, please can you unmute your mic and ask uh, the question. Thanks. Can you do something again. Ah uh, yes, Nevis. Please, please. Can I do something again? Yes. Okay, please, so please. now so people may be asking that the how can we get to to where these other people are? Uh, from the slides that I have seen, we are showing you some projects which we have done. We did not start by maybe by the advanced materials. It, it, it starts from small, you see. So you have to start with the materials available. Like, like for me, from, right from small, I always don't always bother about that. I always just go around picking materials, which I think can help me to develop maybe a project. Like you have to plan, yeah. So you have, as you plan, you say maybe to develop my, my spray nozzle for my robot, or this can help me to develop, to, to cover up my tire for my robot. You just cannot just get local material around, you just start. As you keep on doing things, you get to, to have an idea of how you can further develop or get other materials to, to, to be able to get to something great. So I think that's, those are some of the things that you have to consider. Okay, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Senevi. Thank you very much. Um, all right, all right. Right now, um, um, Daniel is going to be asking us a question. Then after him, we'll be having a question from, from Samuel. And um, thank, thank, thank you, uh, Daniel. Daniel, please can you unmute your mic and speak? Thank you.
Okay, Daniel. Hey, good evening, you. everyone. Okay, Samuel, please just go on. Thank you. Hey, good evening, everyone. I have a question. Please, um, I would like to ask. You guys were talking about hardware. I was really enjoying it. But I was like, is it really only hardware? Like, for example, that water dispenser, is it just made of complete hardware only? Or should we just focus on the hardware and that's all? Okay, so... So that's my question. I was very... I, I didn't really get it. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Um, Webinar is for hardware development, but it doesn't mean that we should not talk about other activities. Yeah, so for, for every, like, almost every hardware device that I see, for example, a phone, a phone runs, runs on a firmware, a laptop runs on a, an operating system. And so those device, those uh, wash hand basin, robots, and flame monitors that you see, they have been programmed to work, but our focus is that we are trying to be a hardware community, but we cannot do hardware without software. So it's not, it's not, only, it's not only hardware. They, there's, there's a chip inside. Let me say a chip. There's a microcontroller inside that has been programmed to do all the tasks which you are telling the, the, the device or the project to do. Yeah. So it's, it's, it has been yeah. programmed. So we talk yeah, about programming, I... but given, given that, given, given that a lot of software communities are around, we are trying to be hardware communities that can be able to, to integrate both software and hardware together. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. That's what I wanted to hear. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, uh, Samuel. And if I may add okay. to what uh, Nevi said, you know, um, uh, it's when we have to blend with software and hardware together, you have uh, the beauty of technology when the two blend together. And um, hardware most often uh, will not really work so well without the software aspect of it. And so uh, the software um, domain cannot be neglected or cannot uh, be overemphasized because it's very necessary to be good in uh, software, so in software development like uh, basic programming because like the projects you just saw in some of the slides uh, like the touchless wash and basin, the robot car, those will be, they, they were being programmed. Uh, a microcontroller was programmed, the Arduino microcontroller. And uh, you know, you don't just connect wire and expect things to work like that. So uh, software is of prime importance. Uh, thank you uh, for your question. Okay, please. Uh, we have room for one question again. Is anyone having a question? Uh, maybe just unmute your mic and say it out. Is, is Boris is Boris still on? Uh, no, I don't think Boris is around right now. Maybe uh, he has okay. To so so we just so just move forward. Mm -hmm. Move forward. Mm -hmm. Please, and, and any question once? Okay. Okay, um, Daniel, Daniel, please, can, can you unmute your mic? And uh, you are saying your question has not been uh, responded to. Please, can you unmute your mic and ask the question, Daniel? Well, good evening to everybody. Good, good evening. evening. Good evening. Yeah. My question was from the third speaker. He mentioned something of technical know-how, and I I didn't really get his point when he was saying have to be able to have an idea of a hardware equipment before implementing it with what you have in your environment. Please, I really like if someone can expand on that. that for me <laughs> okay uh, uh 
<laughs> okay, Daniel, uh, I I I've not really get the question very well. Like he, he, he's making okay. mention of a TED speaker, and the TED speaker kind of uh said uh, you need to have some technical know-how about uh, some of the hardware uh, components in order to work with it. And I'm sure the TED speaker was um that should be John, right? Something that's John. Well, it's unfortunately it's no longer here, but um. Yes, it's John. But our experiences with with with, with uh, hard working with hardware um um please before I never say some uh, before never say something I I, I just like checking this our experiences with working uh, with some hardware um uh, uh, devices in building uh, uh um some prototypes we um like having a technical know how like. At least you should be able to know some basic things. You should be able to know uh, how the use of a resistor. Uh, you should be able to know uh, what a diode is meant for, and you should be able to know some basic basic uh, components in order to build a system. Uh, a system cannot just be built like just from uh, 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 from a very complex idea. That's why I was talking of. Uh, Getting um, the technical know-how aspects of hardware development. Well, he was also he also made mention of um, the exposure to um, so these trends, like to get the technical know-how, you need to get exposed to it, and that's one of the reasons why have amazing communities such as the NetTech. Like I earlier said, uh, uh, you get to network with people, you get to work with on some projects, like you've seen the ones we've done so far. And that will expose you to them. So these uh, hardware uh, products, and you see them, and you get them done hands on, and that will go a long way to improve your technical know-how. And from there, you can keep building up and building up, and uh, maybe realizing your own projects, and and that's how uh, the chain keeps going. All right, Nevis, you wanted to say something, please. Can you just ask? I think I think I have seen most of the things which I wanted to say, so <laughs> I'm not sure how much to say. But anyways, um, concerning the question which he asked about technical know-how, uh, it should not really bother you much. It should not really bother you much because uh, building a project like the one you see there, you can you can learn. It's just like you learning uh, programming. Like I, I have a lot of people who do not. Like they don't really know who do not do computer engineering, but they are very good programmers. That's it. But hardware it requires a bit of technique and creativity. So if if you if you if you have that if you have creative skills in you, you have no problem with hardware. You just need to because you get to a point where you have to do something. And if you, if you cannot think creative, if you, if you cannot if you cannot think creative, like it will be, at times it will be difficult for you to really develop something. So it's, it's not really much of a, it's not really bother you much. So you just way to be creative at times to so be able to go through some projects. Okay, so, so I okay. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, with that, we will we are drawing. We are almost drawing the curtains for this uh, online uh, uh, webinar. And for the conclusion, please will invite. Uh, uh, the founder of Neftec uh, to uh, give us his concluding words, and we will call it a day for this webinar. Thank you, sir. You have to go for the conclusion and the closing remarks. Thank you. I don't know if anybody has any question again before we the closing remarks. Does anyone have a question again? Does anyone have a question again? And everyone who showed up for this meeting, uh, this live webinar for us to, to share these ideas which we have concerning hardware development. Like <clears throat> we talk about the need of us focusing on hardware development. We talk about how to how how. How the hardware development is going to be developed problems in the community and 
the skills, entrepreneurship, it's about how we have a future of technological development. <clears throat> yeah, so these are things which we have seen and they are they're already happening and they are going to there's going to be more in the future. Yeah, so expect that. Oh, so nobody has a question. Please, you can just type the question. If you have a question, you, you, do, you, can, you cannot talk. You can just type the question in the chat so that we can answer directly. Yeah, so getting to know that. And what, and one other reason why I'm really focusing on this is that the, the hardware community is really lagging. And we have seen that in the future, we're using a lot of hardware. Because if you keep programming, if you keep writing code, which, you can, which cannot work on the hardware device, or which you yourself cannot develop a hardware to, for it to run, for the code to run on it, it, we can say it may be useless for you. Like, I, I'm saying this from, from, from the perspective of those who, whom have been training and have given me testimonials. They say at first they were just writing code, but they did not really know the use of the code because they, they did not have something to test it on. But once they see how they wish they can test it on, they feel like this code is okay. This code is, is, is alive. Yeah, it's alive because you can see it alive because if you cannot see it actually activating or moving something, you can say maybe the code is there, just lying there. You cannot compile it, but it's not working. So I want to encourage each and every one of you, if you have passion for hardware, just keep on developing, keep on like, see, see try to figure out uh, challenges around you, around your community, even in the country, and something that can, can, can be able to solve, solve a problem in the world. Yeah, I think I mean, you can develop it. You can work, work, work with a team to develop it out because it, you can, things like this, you cannot do them alone. Like if you want to develop a full working prototype or even a project, you need people in the, with a background who can do circuit design, people can do 3D modeling, people can be able to program, Many people can do circuits and, and, and there are so many of them. So hardware is not, you know, it's not a fear of for one person. So it, it requires a lot of people. So from my presentation, you see that in the future, in, in, in the classroom, we'll be using we use this way to, to facilitate teaching in classes. And, and you see that in medical fee, they are, they are already using drones to talk and, and, and stuff like that. So, and the food industry, you see they are using drones to deliver, robots to deliver food in people's houses. You no longer, you see, those are hardware products that are being delivered. In hospitals, you no longer have to carry heavy things or even do surgery with hands. You see robots are there doing the sewing and cutting and everything. So that's why we really have to embrace this, 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 this hardware uh, development and, and go for it. Uh, <clears throat> so thank you guys so much for showing up. I really appreciate. If you have any question, you can, you can get it to us. Thank you so much. Okay, thank thank you all for coming. Uh, maybe if you have any further questions, you can always get to us. We are, we are up in the tech WhatsApp group. We we, we have uh, you can get to us on our social media platforms. At Facebook, the name is Neftech. YouTube, the name is Neftech. Instagram, Neftech. So you can always get to us in any of the social media platforms. It's really been an awesome meeting with you guys and all. Uh, I've copied a lot of notes and uh, jotted down important points and, and thanks to all the speakers uh, who, who, who made out time for this and thank you all for, for attending. Uh, right now, we will be drawing the curtains of the webinar. Hope to see you in our subsequent uh, our webinars. Thank you all for coming. Good night. Good night.